Cool. Uh, can we get started? Yeah, we can. All right. Uh, so, good evening, everyone. I guess a couple of you have tuned in on YouTube, and you guys will be viewing this uh, presentation, which we at IEEE and ITK will be giving with respect to the various membership benefits of IEEE. So, my name is Chandra Nen. I am a final year student uh, in the mechanical engineering department, and I have been a part of IEEE ever since my first year. So, I was a student member in my first year, and then I became an executive member in my second year. I was the head of the SEC, which is the Student Activities uh, Committee in my third year. And finally, I'm the chief coordinator of IEEE and ITK in my final year. So I have been a part of this club, as you can see, throughout my entire engineering uh, experience and entire engineering uh, duration. And I feel it has been one of the most important and uh, greatest parts of this entire journey. The reason being that IEEE gave me a lot of friends, it gave me a lot of various people who I could discuss and talk to about various ideas. It also let me figure out what my true passion in life was. I realized that by doing a lot of projects in robotics and so on, uh, my first project being in first year, uh, that robotics was the thing which I had to do and now moving on I intend to even do a master's in the field. So uh, what I want you to understand is that IEEE can benefit you in a lot of different ways. We have a lot of different opportunities and resources and uh, various other uh, initiatives which are right at your disposal. And today we'll be talking about them. So yeah, uh, Vineet, uh, without any further ado, let's go to the next slide. All right, so what is IEEE? IEEE is the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. It is the largest uh, technical professional organization in the entire world. So uh, it is number one, it has a maximum number of members. People like Elon Musk are a member of it. You have every popular person who has cared about uh, engineering and uh, in any single form having related with IEEE in, a, uh, in some way or the other, either by publishing various papers under the prestigious IEEE Explore, taking part in the prestigious IEEE Extreme, which is a hackathon, taking part in various other initiatives such as volunteering and helping other student branches and colleges grow and so on. Many of the members from NITK who are big uh, contributors to IEEE and NITK have gone on to actually contribute even from a greater extent as a part of the Bangalore subsection, Bangalore section and so on. So at NITK however what we do is that we create an environment where members are able to collaborate and come up with new ideas, you know, and that is in line with what IEEE itself does. IEEE is focused on making world changing technology. And at IEEE and ITK, we try to do our little bit to contribute for this as well. So, yeah, there are a lot of world class resources and opportunities. You get to learn a lot. You get access to your own technical magazines, which are pretty useful if you're really interested in engineering. So, uh, in one line, if I had to summarize what IEEE is, it is a place to be if you are a technical enthusiast and a very, very keen engineer. This is the one place which you should be. Uh, the next slide. So what is IEEE? So this is the organizational structure. So there are 342 local sections which are uh, created across 10 geographic regions. 10 geographic regions include like, you know, North America, Asia, Asia itself divided into various parts and so on. You know, like there are many geographic regions that you have 342 such local sections. We have 39 societies and seven technical councils. So what do I mean by societies is that, you know, even if you take something like electrical and electronics engineering, there's a lot of different divisions which come under it. Uh, so one thing which I want to make clear, IEEE doesn't just target electrical and electronics, there's even scope for computer science, there's scope for mechanical, there's scope for robotics, there's scope for uh, various other engineer, engineering management, there's scope for all those aspects come under one wing and that is what makes it so cool. So these 39 societies ensure that it targets every single thing. In fact, recently we even had one related to GRSS, which is related to, you know, uh, geographical resources and so on. So there are uh, various uh, divisions which actually focus on any niche topics which are extremely important. So there are 1,834 chapters of local members with similar technical interests and there are 2,000 student branches at colleges and universities in 80 countries. So why am I just throwing random numbers at you? No other reason, I just want you to, sh I want to show you the scale of what we are talking about. This is the largest technical organization and these numbers actually prove how exactly it's working. 
and the image technically shows how the entire organizational structure works so there's main IEEE you have the region and the subsection and that and then the student branch and on the left hand side you see that IEEE society and then there are various chapters into it as well so it's based on whether you're dividing it based on geography or whether you're dividing it based on the application uh, of the thing uh, next slide all right. Uh, so as I said, you know, like, see, uh, we have different regions and these are the 10 regions which have been shown on the right. And then this is the part how we come, you know, we have 10 regions and we are part of in IEEE India Council, then Bangalore section, and then finally IEEE and ITK Karnataka. So um, we have around 400 plus active members as of today. And uh, we are one of the exclusive clubs of uh, NITK with the highest number of projects and events. So yeah, that is... Uh, one of the things which we are really proud of. I exclusive club for those of you who don't know is that there are six exclusive clubs in NITK. Uh, you can join only one of them. Uh, you can't join any more than one. Uh, these are the most. Uh, these are considered highly prestigious clubs uh, because of this rule as such, and they work on many different technical and non-technical projects uh, throughout the year. So IEEE is one of the uh, uh, six exclusive clubs in NITK uh, as of today. Uh, next slide. So who are we? So as I said, right, uh, even though it, the name can be a little misleading at times, but uh, making it seem as if IEEE is focused on electrical and electronics engineering, uh, it's not actually true because we have divisions for Comsoc, Diode and Piston. Comsoc focuses on computer science, IT, and I guess your, your year onwards is even artificial intelligence. So this will come under Comsoc. Diode will focus on IEEE and EC students and all those projects related to that. Uh, signals and systems, uh, robotics, automation, all that comes under that wing. And Piston has everything core, you know, like from mechanical, civil, chemical, uh, metallurgy, mining, everything have various projects related to that. And it, we even have interdisciplinary access, you know. Like for instance, uh, one of the projects which you are currently working on is an anti-anti mask or basically, uh, you know, if a person's not wearing a COVID-19 mask while walking around, uh, a drone will be able to recognize and actually raise an alarm for it. So that has actually had an uh, inter-sig collaboration. That is, people from Diode and people from Piston together collaborate to work on the project. So we do allow that as well. And uh, likewise, even Comsoc, uh, may, many members have worked on projects related to Diode and Piston. So in various interdisciplinary fields, they've come together. And we have all these various societies, which is uh, like uh, IEEE Computer Society, then the IEEE Signal Processing Society, uh, CAS is the Circuits and Application Society, then we have the IEEE Industry and Application Society. Then recently we created the Robotics and Automation Society, which is pretty new, uh, and we have the entire uh, division for, you know, robotics, automation, mechatronics, and so on. And IEEE GRSS, as I mentioned, Geoscience and Remote Sensing Society has also been created, you know. So there are even such niche concepts which fall, fall into it. And uh, then IEEE Photonics Society is also a part of this. So. What I want to show you in this slide is that we have a lot of range. We are giving you a lot of options. We're giving you a lot of uh, flexibility in whatever projects you may uh, take part of if you join us in your first year. And this entire thing can uh, bring up a very holistic learning as you learn not just the, the uh, go into depth about your own field, but also get a touch of various other fields which may be related into your with your project as well. Uh, next slide. So we also have two affinity groups. So we have IEEE Women in Engineering. So this is extremely important given the uh, current trends and as we are moving towards uh, embracing equality and equity, it's extremely important that uh, we are able to actually uh, give more uh, initiatives and build up more events which uh, target uh, women as well. And we have various events which happen, uh, which actually do focus on this and IEEE as a whole has some events which are exclusively men, uh, exclusively given for uh, female candidates and uh, to encourage them to enter into various events for the same. IEEE site is for special interest group on humanitarian technology, for instance, in some rural places uh, which don't have water, for instance, how would you create a water purifier? Or if you had to go to a place which doesn't have enough energy uh, but has quite a lot of sunlight, how would you uh, make cheap, affordable, uh, solar power generating devices which are able to fuel some bare necessities in their home. So site is for those of you who want to have a social touch to all your projects, try to actually ensure that whatever projects you work on, don't just add to your resume and add to your um, applications and your job 
profile as such, but also make a contribution to the world as such. Uh, next slide. So what do we do? Research areas and divisions. So uh, first off, we have the Computer Society SIG. So Comsoc is uh, one of the most active SIGs in uh, IEEE and IDK, and it, it's divided into many different parts, and each of them focus on whatever interests them. You know. So we are not going to push anything down your throat. Whatever interests you, whatever seems interesting and cutting edge, or whatever uh, you know tickles your fancy, it's it's there for you. So in core CS, we have the entire algorithms, cryptography, databases, game theory, all that is covered. Then intelligence has the entire artificial intelligence and machine learning. Finally, systems has the entire operating systems, computer architecture, parallel computing, network security, distributed systems. So all these divisions exist. Uh, again, point of this slide to show that we have everything which you might ever need in any idea which you might pose. If you have an idea in systems, you, we assure you you are covered. If you have an idea in machine learning, we assure you you are covered. If you have an idea in cryptography, we assure you are covered. We'll give you the right mentors. We'll give you the right uh, project partners. You'll be able to do a great project. And sooner than you'll know, you'll be able to uh, come out with a proper project, a proper report, and you'll be able to even present it to a lot of other fellow students and uh, uh, fellow students and even some professors in the project expo, which happens at the end of the year. Our next slide. So these are the projects. So uh, Envision is the name of the first year projects which we have. And these are some of uh, last year, the uh, current second years worked on these various uh, projects as they, when they were working as uh, when they joined us as student members. So blog application with Flutter, bus ticket application, native Android, Connect4, COVID tracker, Flappy Bird. You know, all these are relatively uh, medium to slightly actually uh, slightly complex and even appreciable projects which have all been completed in like three to four months. So it's really a great job and all this. So while most people in uh, your batch wouldn't have completed a project by the end of first year, you will have completed a proper solid project and you will be able to explain it for any internship which you ask for after first year or during your club recruitments in second year or for anything else, it will stay on your resume. My Envision project, which I did in my first year, continues to stay on my resume. It was a home safety bot. I'll speak about more when it comes to piston, but yeah, I want to tell you that these projects can make quite a lot of difference and it can make, uh, it can tell you a lot. And by working on these projects, you can also understand what your interests are and understand what field you want to pursue and even maybe what field you don't want to pursue. So this year we have the, these following projects. Uh, so as you can see, it's a huge range of projects and these are not the only projects which we have. If you guys have some new idea which you want to make. We are totally open to giving you the kind of resources, seniors and uh, mentors uh, to actually guide you through this project and you know, uh, maybe uh, get a proper project or even if it's that good, maybe even get a research paper out of it. So there's MBA prediction, NITK chatbot, we have VS code extension, all of this can be done, all of these projects were uh, done last year and we can make various extensions to this as well. So uh, you guys can work on many, many other projects and uh, try to think of how exactly that could work in as, as well. So the goal which this entire slide shows is that these are all the projects which many seniors and people who are just one year older than you did when they were where you are uh, one year or two, year, two years back. So you have the access to do or doing all of these projects and it's, it's going to be extremely simple. So we are, we are going to be there to guide you throughout the entire process and it will be something which you can be really proud of at the end of the day. Next slide. Now coming to Diode. Diode as I mentioned is for the AAA and EC enthusiasts. We have these various projects. You know, as I mentioned, power electronics, hardware accelerators, robotics, audio and speech processing, image processing, AI for signal processing, photonics, analog and digital VLSI, embedded systems and internet of things. Anything and everything which you might have heard of in AAA and ECA has been covered and we do a huge job. As mentioned, IEEE is the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. So obviously there's a lot of demand, a lot of resources and as I mentioned, we have three societies for it. The Signal Processing Society or the SPS, the CAS and the Photonic Society. So it's a brilliant place to actually work on any of these projects and the images on the right are just, you know, proving exactly what has been done and what can be done as, as well. Uh, next slide. So again, these are what on the left you can see the projects which were done by uh, first years last year. 
which is ALU design, audio fingerprinting, circuit design, uh, surveillance system to direct violation and COVID system. So all these are pretty great projects for a first year, all right? So if you do this in your first year and you tell, okay, I did this project in my first year and this is all, these were the deliverables which I came up with, then that's amazing. You're able to explain everything and whether you're talking to a prof for an internship or a member in the industry for an internship or for, for any other initiatives or for, to get into a club, for instance, in your second year, you'll be able to use all of this. So that is how this is really, really beneficial. And your seniors worked on these uh, following projects, you know, IoT stethoscope, wireless battery charger, FPGA implementation. So uh, everything which you can think of, everything which all of you who are right now sitting, who are once excited about doing in engineering back during JE times, you know, when you were putting all your stress, uh, uh, sweat and uh, tears into it, you dreamt that one day you'd be coming to a college and doing some really cool things. This is your chance. This is the cool things which you've been seeing every single sci-fi movie, every single Marvel movie where anyone has been doing anything. We'll be doing that, maybe not to the same extent, but would pretty a uh, similar extent, you will actually understand how a lot of things really work out in the end. So that's what uh, is there with respect to diode as well. Uh, next slide. Now Pistons. So Pistons pretty close to me because as I mentioned, uh, I was in my uh, first year, uh, I'm in mechanical engineering and I joined Piston SIG. My first project was something similar to the project on the right. It was a, a, a home safety board. So my mother had mentioned that, you know, gas uh, explosions because of this entire LPG gas explosions were pretty common. Uh, so how exactly do we prevent that? So my idea, which I pitched to IEEE, I didn't take a project which IEEE offered. I wanted my own idea. I said, okay, let's make a robot which is capable of going around an arena. And it is capable of monitoring the amount of LPG gas consumption. It is also able to uh, measure the temperature in case there's a fire and uh, also check other important aspects which are important for home safety and reason alarm if anything crosses a particular threshold so if lpg gas crosses a particular threshold immediately raise an alarm or if the temperature crosses a, a particular amount raise an alarm so this is my first project and as you mentioned in my final year it still is on my resume uh, although it is one of the last ones which i put because it was done back in my first year it is still a very, very great project and it really put me into robotics. After that, in my second, third years, everything I worked completely on robotics. So I can thank IEEE and Piston for the fact that they gave me, they helped me understand what my true passion in engineering is. And since robotics was very interdisciplinary, I really liked it because I worked on CS, I worked on electronics, I worked on mechanical and yeah, I was just a mechanical engineering student and managed to do all of it along with my teammates. That is truly, uh, really, really interesting and I really, really like it. So you guys will be able to do this, all this as well. Automobile, aerospace, biomechanics, chemical and thermal, heat and energy, robotics control, structure and materials, product management and so on. Next slide. These are the, uh, apart from these, we will also be having, uh, these are the various projects which we have uh, uh, are done in the past, uh, like cross simulation. Uh, we need, uh, there's some uh, uh, noise from the side, can you mute? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, uh, so without any further ado, all right. Uh, so there's uh, this entire, uh, we did various projects related to robotics and uh, uh, as you can see, detecting metal surface defects with ML. So as I mentioned, this is, these are various, uh, you know, mechanical core discipline students and they are working with machine learning. So one of the juniors who I mentored has co completely gone into the uh, CS domain and right now he even has an internship at a leading uh, US bank where he's going to work as an analyst, machine learning analyst as an intern after his third year. So yeah, uh, even though you're in core, even though he's in mechanical, he managed to do that. And that's all because we have that uh, great and extent of, you know, interdisciplinary work. And then there's analysis of drag reduction system. For those of you who are in Formula One, you should be knowing this. Design of a pneumatic motor, humanoid walking robot, and CFD modeling of a 2D fluidized bed. These were the projects done by first years. And then on the right, you can see the projects which we did. Uh, so as you can see, multiple projects which have covered a lot of things. And 
uh, a lot of the projects on the right have even gone on to become uh, proper research papers. We presented them at competitions and won. For example, as you can see, the design of a powertrain for a high payload multi rotor UAV won the best project award at the fifth national IEEE pro project uh, uh, project uh, meet as such. And so, a lot of such opportunities can open up if you join IEEE, and we give you a lot of these, a lot of access to these events as well. Uh, now the next slide. Uh, now what else do we do? We have a lot of hackathons like Embedathon, Impulse, Mystify. We'll ensure that you guys are busy. We'll give you a lot of challenges. We'll give you a lot of problems. We'll give you a lot of uh, you know competitions. We'll give you a lot of uh, problem statements which you can keep working on and keep improving your mind and just keep getting better as an engineer. Uh, around 50 projects are done. I've shown you the list of everything. You guys saw how big it was. We, we did all of that in the span of one year. You know. And it's really kudos to all the many members who are a part of IEEE and ITK. We have a lot of uh, workshops where we teach uh, various concepts as well, PCB design. Uh, resume building is something which I took myself, computing technologies and so on. We have expert talks. So as you can see, the man on the left is uh, Daniel Pucci. He's a pro professor at the Italiano Institute of uh, Technology. And he actually gave a talk on aerial humanoid robotics. So basically like, you know, Ultron. Uh, robots which look like a human and are able to fly. So it combines the benefit of a quad rotor and a humanoid in one. As you can see on the image, you can see on the left hand side, you see a small robot, right? That one can actually fly and it can walk and it can do everything. So those are aerial humanoid robots. We also have knowledge sharing sessions where we teach about various concepts. So as you can see, mobile sensing at scale was, uh, was one of the talks which was given by Prashant Misra from uh, TCS Research. He was a scientist at TCS Research. So. We have a lot of these concepts. So, um, as my final note, I'd say this: IEEE has benefited me a lot, and I joined in my first year. And I'd recommend that you guys, if you're really interested and really passionate, also actually take it up and find your true passion. Explore as much as possible. Learn and uh, take take in as much as you can in your first year. Because from second year, the the amount of workload which you have greatly increases. You have to uh, worry about you know getting your second year internship. You have to worry about focusing on your grades because now on, now you enter your department. In third year, you have to focus on your internships, which happen on campus. You'll have to spend considerable amount of time preparing for it. And in your final year, you'll have your college applications or your placements. And by then, you want to finally chill before you enter the adulthood of life. So. First year is the time to explore. You don't have any other time. That's the one wisdom which I can give you right now. It's just that. The one year when you can literally learn anything and get better is first year. You, If you miss that bus, it can cause a lot of issues down the line. So do not miss the bus. Ensure that first year you do something, you manage to actually focus and give your best. Uh, try to learn something. Try to come up with some new ideas. Try to join IEEE or even, even if uh, try to work on various projects, keep yourself engaged, learn, grow, and talk to many seniors. Uh, that would be what I would recommend at, as I come to an end of my uh, entire uh, speech. But now I'll pass it on to Vineet, who will be talking more about being a student member in IEEE and IDK. I thank you guys for listening to me, and I wish all of you the very best, and welcome to NITK, and uh, as soon as you guys can come, we'll be glad to meet you guys. All right, see you guys. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chandran. I hope I'm audible. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, 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 Chandran just gave you an overview of uh, what IEEE is and what we do at IEEE and ITK. Now we'll get to the good stuff. I'll be talking about what you guys will do and what benefits you will reap uh, from becoming a student member within your first year or your second year. Uh, my name is Vineet. I'm the vice chairperson of IEEE and ITK. Uh, yeah, so now the the benefits you have in IEEE NITK are of twofold, right? One is within NITK and outside NITK. First, we'll come within NITK, what opportunities and uh, benefits you have. Uh, this can be classified into four. Uh, the Envision Project, Summer Mentorship Program, uh, Knowledge Sharing Sessions, and then Networking and Mentorship from your seniors. So firstly, the Envision, uh, Chandran already spoke about it in, uh, extensively. Uh, I won't go into much detail about it. Um, uh, but you would be doing a project, say, two to three months, and there'll be a mentor from for you from second to third year. Uh, speaking from experience, in my first year, I had worked on a 2D mapping bot. And uh, to be honest, that's the project which really taught me how to, you know, uh, work in a team, what it really takes to do, uh, what it really takes to do a project, 
uh, and it also played an impo important role in uh, getting into clubs and also getting into an internship in uh, second year. Uh, so this uh, Envision really gives you a feeling of uh, practical engineering. And uh, yeah, certificates will also be provided uh, if you do well, but uh, you know, that's not the point, right? You get to learn and you get a uh, real good exposure. Uh, yeah, these are the Envision projects which will happen this year. Uh, you can obviously, you know, uh, propose your own projects as well. And uh, this does not include all the Envision projects. Some of them are still getting finalized. Uh, so you can see uh, their wide array of projects, right? From uh, drone simulation to programmable uh, robot arm, then uh, you have a Hoffman encoder, uh, Chrome extensions, and uh, so on and so forth. Um, yeah, next coming to the next uh, benefit, uh, it is the summer mentorship program. Uh, the summer mentorship program happens uh, at around uh, May, June, July time. So what happens is your seniors uh, and people who are really doing well in a domain, so they give you mentorship on the domains you are interested in. So last year we had over 20 subjects, fields, and domains covered, uh, starting say from electronics to computer science to core mechanical metal metallurgy fields. Uh, one pride uh, thing about it is uh, last year, even though the situation was uh, online, we managed to ship the analog electronics hardware to the homes of the students uh, in order that uh, they, they can get a better practical experience of what they are doing, right? So in this uh, mentorship program, it will take place through teams, video calls. Uh, the seniors will also give you resources where you can learn from. And also we'll be pro doing a small project through what you learn because you know at the end of the day uh, it's you know the practical learning uh, which will really help you out uh, yeah next coming to the uh, knowledge sharing sessions and workshops so so we have the workshops knowledge sharing sessions happening every single month yeah so uh, on the middle there is uh, one of the top speech processing professors in the country prashant kumar ghosh who gave who came to give a talk on speech processing then we had talks, say, on uh, uh, how to do PhDs, and then also workshops on computational imaging. We had a lot more workshops, uh, which uh, I, we couldn't cover because of uh, time constraints. But within the video YouTube uh, link description, uh, we have a link for the annual report. Right? In the annual report, uh, you will find all the events which uh, we cover, which you covered in the previous year. Um, yeah. Then coming to other advantages. Uh, the projects which you will be doing in your first year and you know the annual projects, uh, they, they receive funding directly from IEEE. So say say your project involves hardware or it requires some costs. So you can always you will get rebate of that amount. Uh, so that, that's one plus. Other than that, we have a well-knit community. As Chandran was saying, you know, many top professors across the globe are IEEE senior members. And uh, you know, there's a wide stretched uh, and uh, resourceful alumni uh, say working in Google, Microsoft, also studying in MIT, Harvard, and uh, so on. So also not this, uh, th there are many volunteering and uh, leadership opportunities within and outside uh, NITK. And one uh, benefit we also provide is next year in your recruitment tests, uh, you, you won't, you will be exempted from the first uh, written round. You'll be directly qualified to your uh, interview rounds. Yeah, now that uh, we are done with our benefits within NITK, uh, let's go to the global benefits. Uh, yeah. So say you're a student interested in particular fields, right? So when you become an IEEE member, you have an opportunity to affili affiliate yourself with these societies. For example, RAS is uh, Robotics and Automation Society, or AESS is Aerospace and Electronic Systems Secu uh, Society, and so on, right? And also you get a discount on conferences, uh, tutorials, uh, publications, and so on. So you have access to IEEE Explore uh, uh, Digital Library and also a two-month subscription to uh, award-winning magazine uh, called Spectrum. Uh, yeah, there are many more benefits. Uh, I'll cover a few of them, uh, but then you can always uh, look at the link in the description, which uh, covers almost all the benefits which uh, IEEE pro pro provides. Because the volume and the diversity is so much, it wouldn't be possible to, you know, to cover all the benefits. So one of the benefits is, you know, you get an authentic IEEE uh, org email address. Trust me, this is very useful, especially when you want to network or, you know, apply to any place outside India, because, uh, you know, IEEE is recognized uh, across the globe. And then uh, Collaboratech is a, is a way of, you know, joining with like-minded like communities, uh, creating uh, workstations where you can, you know, work with people across the globe. And then you also have many IEEE student mentoring and educational programs. Uh, there's an IEEE job site where you know you can find jobs and 
there's also volunteering uh, leadership training program. Uh, yeah, again, the details uh, I won't go into because of time constraints. Uh, and then competitions. So competitions, as you know, is a very good way of, you know, you know learning something new, uh, you know, really putting yourself to the test. Uh, these are the competitions for competitive programmers. There's a IEEE Extreme, Signal Processing Cup, um, mobile uh, development uh, and uh, so on. Uh, in fact, we uh, NITK students do quite well in this. In fact, uh, a team of mine came uh, you know, 12th globally in the Signal Processing Cup, uh, which is uh, quite good, I hope. And uh, yeah, then coming to student grants, uh, fellowship and scholarships. Uh, yeah, so I've mentioned a few. Uh, one of them is for Aeroship, uh, uh, Aerospace and Electronic System Society provides and uh, you also have this Richard E. Merwin scholarship which is provided by computer and uh, electrical engineering society uh, for those students. Uh, so again, uh, these again in the final uh, link in the description, you have a full list of all the scholarship, all the grants, uh, all the fellowships which are possible for you to get. So I, I would highly recommend it that you guys look into that and you know really see what opportunities are there for you. Okay. Now that we have covered more or less what opportunities are present and uh, now coming to the part of you know registration procedure. So there is a Google form which will be spamming uh, for it in your WhatsApp groups. It's also again present in the description of this video. So you'll have to fill this uh, form by Friday, which is the deadline. And uh, you know you need to wait for a few days. Our members will directly contact you. And then you'll have to pay an amount of 990 rupees. Uh, and then we'll be giving you a challenge and you'll get a unique uh, IEEE membership number. And then within a week, uh, you get uh, the IEEE membership. So you might ask this question, right? Like, why are we paying this 990 rupees? To... So the thing is that this 990 rupees is not to us. It does not come to NITK student branch. It is to the IEEE uh, headquarters. Across the globe, anybody needs to become a IEEE student member, needs to play, pay, pay a price of $27. Uh, fortunately for us, a 50% off is given by the Bangalore section. So we can just pay the 990 rupees. In return for this, as I have been telling throughout the presentation, you get so many benefits, uh, funding for your projects, uh, so many competitions, so many uh, uh, networking opportunities, and uh, a lot more, right? And uh, finally, before coming to FAQs, uh, uh, I would like to say something. Um, the exposure you uh, generally, you know, the kind of exposure you have in life, th that is what leads to the amount of knowledge, understanding, uh, and uh, uh, interest you develop, right? And that's what we do in IEEE. See, the, the di diverse fields which we offer give you an opportunity to explore all these fields, right? See, the, by the time the subjects are, are covered in your coursework, it is maybe third year or fourth year, right? So by then you wouldn't have time, you know, to explore everything and you know come up with the because by the end of fourth year you would like to have a particular interest in mind, right? So th that's what we do. We provide you with all ample opportunities within NITK and also there are much more opportunities outside NITK to explore, you know, to really make use of opportunities and really understand what you know what really makes you excited and what you want to work on for the rest of your life. Now coming to the frequently asked questions. Uh, how much money I should pay? Uh, I already covered this uh, 990 rupees. And then how should I pay and who should I pay this? We will directly contact you. And once you're paid, you're, you pay, you'll also get a challenge and uh, through which, after which, one week after which you'll get your membership as well. And uh, yeah, I, I already covered this. Are you paying this to NITK student branch? No, definitely not. This directly goes to the IEEE headquarters in the US. Uh, and um, yeah, can I take part in Envision and SMP without the membership? Unfortunately not. So this is only specific to IEEE student members. And are student members preferred more during recruitments in second year? No, we strongly believe in uh, meritocracy, uh, but we will give you exemption from your first uh, written round. And uh, yeah, financial aid you can receive is a maximum of 10K. And uh, yeah, if you're a second year, third year, fourth year BTEC, MTech or an MCU student, can I still get in, become a student member? Yes, definitely. Uh, as I had told, you have a lot of opportunities and benefits. But if you are a first year, the amount of, you know, the, the benefit you can have because you're still new to engineering, right? So that is unparalleled. So if you are a first year, uh, I my it's my personal opinion that it is very useful and, you know, very uh, helpful for you to uh, take up this membership. So, yeah, now... Uh, you can always uh, obviously i couldn't cover everything in this uh, presentation because of time constraints so you can always contact us uh, uh, this is my number i'm vineet narayan uh, 
uh, and you can also contact our chairperson karthik rao uh, if you have any doubts or any queries or anything related to any of the benefits and so on uh, you, you can all now you can put your doubts or questions which you have in the chat box on youtube uh, i'll try to take them up okay yeah so one of the questions uh, i think is uh, when will we be doing these mentioned projects uh, if we join i3p in first year so the projects will start off from february itself uh, the first week of february once you become part of i3p so there will be a form which will be released where you know there are various projects you will also be have an opportunity to uh, you know to propose your own projects and uh, so on so it will, it will start from february it will go on till april may and then your summer mentorship program as i had already told it's uh, in the summer months uh, yeah and the cases and all happens throughout the year yeah and the next question any test to become a member okay so in your first year to become or to become a student member you do not require any tests we we take everyone in to become an executive member of iitripli there is another separate recruitment process but to student, become a student member uh, all are open you just have to register and then you can uh, you know start working on your project and you know grow uh, yeah any other questions uh, you can post it up okay i will wait for another 30 seconds or 1 minute uh, if you have no other questions Uh, we'll close, and uh, you know you can always contact us. Uh, the the form registration link is in the description, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, how difficult will it be to manage academics and clubs? So. Uh, like i would say in your first year it is going to be you know the most free or ever going to be du during your engineering because in your second year you would be getting into your department right so from your second year you'll be working on your departmental projects the work given in your department and uh, you know third year as chandran told you'll be working on trying to get internships and so on so in your first year it, it is the best time you would be the you know you would be really free uh, there will be some academics but compared to your senior years it would be much 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 more chill so first year personally for me uh, i didn't really face any difficulty because uh, you know you you're not going to have any aca academic projects per se and uh, yeah i i i strongly believe in your first year it is going to be quite simple but i i also would suggest that you go on doing projects in your second year third year as well and you no know, it's slightly more hectic in your final senior years but you know practical knowledge cannot be replaced by any kind of theoretical knowledge you have yeah can we introduce any new projects yes yeah you can propose your own projects uh, it will go through a committee where you know you can uh, where they will you know filter it out see the feasibility of the projects so the thing is that you can do a project by yourself also right so what does i3p provide so what we do is we we mentor we have seniors who, are, who have been working on projects say two three years say if you are working on you want to work on machine learning we have people who have been doing that for three years yeah so they can really see the feasibility of it uh, if it can, if it is possible and they can also provide mentorship right so you can propose your project so we will we will pass it through the committee we'll see if it is feasible if if it is not possible we will catch you in a meet we'll try to you know to make slight changes in the proposal so that it is feasible okay can we join any other club after joining an i triple so in your, to become a student member uh, it is not exclusive so you can always become a student member Uh, in your first year and uh, you can take part in this projects so the exclusive projects thing which is there that that starts in your second year right so that is to become an executive member so that is not related to this to become a student member now uh, there is no restrictions per se okay um okay what will be the validity of the membership so the membership is valid for one year so you you'll be uh, you're taking membership now in january so it will be valid till next year december 31st i mean 2022 december 31st okay and uh, yeah so the membership is valid for one year yeah any other questions
okay uh, yeah i think that's all so i think i would like to conclude uh, you know by saying that you know i we as a club you know uh, push you towards you know learning new things uh, exploring and you know becoming adept techno with the technological fields and your core departments so that you can find your interests and then you can grow and you can inspire others as well thank you